Hello. About 30 years ago, I worked in a country garage. One of the old geezers who worked there, a lovely fellow called John, gave me a pair of goggles. He knew I was a pilot even then, and uh, he thought they might come in handy. They were this style of goggle. I used these in the Vauxhall. They don't quite in this condition, though. I took them to pieces, and uh, the leather around here was absolutely shot. It was as sort of shriveled up as Tutankhamun and I, I covered it in Neatsford oil, put it in a plastic bag and left it for about two decades I should think. Amazingly it did sort of come back to life but I couldn't ever get it any better than Keith Richards or thereabouts so I'm afraid it went in the bin. Anyway recently I came across the bits of goggle again and I decided I'd set myself a challenge. I've got the frames I painted them a long time ago, they were probably done 30 years ago. Um, etch primer and, I don't know, some smooth gloss black. They're not bad actually still. And I've also got the inner part that holds the glass. Anyway, the challenge I've set myself is to make a new pair of goggles from the old. My wife threw away a leather bag a while back, so I took all the useful leather bits off it. And I cut at least a new sort of frame out if you like. I've got a piece of elastic and of course we established recently that this polycarbonate Lexan Macrolon or whatever it is is basically bulletproof and it would make good lenses. I work away from home and uh, I want to do this whilst I'm away and I'm just going to compromise this slightly by saying I always uh, travel with hand luggage only so the plan is to get everything in my hand luggage and through airport security multiple times without actually breaking the rules the plan isn't to break the rules at all but to carry all the things I need that won't irritate airport security uh, to repair the goggles so what I'm going to take is obviously the frame the lenses some goggles some lenses cut out of the polycarbonate, needles, thread. I'm going to get some epoxy. Now I think I can put that in my wash bag so I can sort of, as long as I remember not to clean my teeth with the tube of epoxy, I think we'll be alright. Even the two-part mix-up stuff. Some hotel key cards cut into stirrers and I think that's about it. I think that's all I need. Anyway, we're going to see how we get on. It's a bit of fun. There's one other thing on the bench here that I didn't, I touched but I didn't uh, pick up. I thought I'd already mentioned them. These are some pins I made and tried. I've got a couple of holes drilled already. When I start sewing, I've got to make sure everything's lined up. And so if I poke a pin through the goggle frame and then go into my leather frame it will stay lined up and so I've got half a dozen pins cut out of old ends of welding rod and, and sharpened um, and I'll put those in my wallet I don't think anyone take any notice of them at all they're certainly not dangerous I have to point out I'm the captain of the airplane <laughs> I don't think I'm going to hijack myself somehow it's all rather silly anyway first things first I'm going to mark up some lenses to cut out from the polycarbonate so I do have the other one of these but of course they're, they're not handed at the moment these lenses so I'm merely going to mark a straight line in fact let's put a straight line on the polycarbonate because obviously each lens is two pieces because of the angle um, I'm going to take some sandpaper as well actually I don't think anyone even notice sandpaper in my bag um, maybe a little wooden block but again that's there's lots of other things in hotels one can improvise anyway let's mark those round at least with the sandpaper I'll be able to trim all this sort of stuff slightly um, it's going to be I'm going to epoxy them in place I'm actually not going to use these frames themselves really because I don't need to I think I can just 
epoxy everything in. So let's do one more of those with so we need a line marked on again somewhere around there. Nice straight line. I've got a magnet stuck to those, that's why they're all stuck together and they stuck to the square. So a line on here. Around there again. Dig it up. There we go. Now you know the score. I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and take a film of it and then speed it up. That's the lenses cut out. Uh, I just tried them in the frame. They do fit. They need chamfering here, which is why I've got the sandpaper. I've actually got myself a little wooden block as well, which I'm going to put in my bag, because if I put the sandpaper around that, I can chamfer the edges and basically glue that together carefully with epoxy. Some bright spark will probably tell me epoxy doesn't work on uh, polycarbonate, but we'll find that out. It doesn't matter if it's a disaster after all. Um, it doesn't really matter in the least. Anyway, I'm actually going away very early tomorrow morning so it is time to pack my bag and go. I needed to get some epoxy for gluing the lenses in and uh, after leaving the UK within 48 hours I found myself flying into Luton and staying in Hatfield for a couple of nights. I decided to walk to a screw fix in St Albans this afternoon and to my delight there's a footpath that goes basically from St Albans to uh, Hatfield and back. It's the old railway line, I didn't realise that and there's a couple of restored stations on the way. This one is Nast Hyde Halt. It's uh, maybe a little overdone, but it was done by local residents, and it's rather fun. I think it's a, an affectionate salaam to the, the railway that ran here until 1969. This is the second disused station. It's Smallford, which is about halfway between Hatfield and St Albans. The platform top is in reasonable condition. You can see the uh, cycle path as well. And uh, a new running inboard has been made, or station signboard. Somewhat astonishingly, the station building survives and in reasonable condition. It's uh, in the scrapyard property, but I'm told that it's uh, being contemplated for use as bicycle hire, which would be most excellent if it was. You can see down the platform there where that gentleman's cycling, where the platform was widened a bit for loading scrap. Anyway, back to the goggles. I'm now in Delhi, of all places, in a transit hotel at the airport for 24 hours. Not by choice, but there we are. Anyway, a good place to carry on. So what I'm doing now is um, sanding the edges of the perspex to fit the frames. Now, of course, there's a bit of a an angle on the frame there, and I need to sand these to about half the angle so then I can slot in each part of the uh, lens and they will meet on that corner there and then they can be uh, glued in the lens to the right angle. So I'm sanding them with my sanding block and sandpaper 
basically sitting here doing for quite some time and uh, I'm sure you don't want to sit and watch it well unless you're the same person who wanted to see all the paint drying um, so I'll come back when they're sanded and, and we can try fitting them in the frames. The polycarbonate lenses are now sanded and fitted in the frames they fit fairly well. There's a tiny gap down the front there that I can fill with epoxy and I had a little read up on the interweb earlier and the epoxy is quite good for gluing polycarbonate so it's the right sort of glue anyway so that's one well, lens falling out but doesn't matter and that's the other obviously I can sort of push the lenses into place when it comes to final gluing but that's that's pretty much how they would be I don't want to take this protective film off yet until it's time to glue the lenses in because it's actually not time to glue yet these frames have got quite a lot of holes in as you can see and actually before I left home I, I took all the holes out to sixteenth of an inch I did that for the very simple reason that my little drill here is sixteenth of an inch and I wanted to be able to spot through the frame into the leather and it made it a lot easier if all the holes were the same size now on the inside of the frame near the nose piece are these holes here there's seven on each frame they need to be or the frame needs to be sewn to the leather pretty much like so let me turn that so you can see inside through that inner part of the frame before the lenses are glued in place so now what I'm going to do is carefully mark the holes for those um, seven sort of drill holes and then sew through carefully. I did take those holes out as well to a sixteenth um, and I also bent the frame ever so slightly too which I didn't show you with a pair of pliers before I left home so I could actually get the needle through in a straight line without having to use a curved needle which just brought in more extra complication. The frames are now sewn to the leather part. Uh, it worked quite well, I'll just turn it round there. It was too difficult to film, I'm afraid. I tried a few times and I thought, sod it, now listened to a podcast and drilled and, and stitched away. But the job is done. I can tidy all these little offcuts up later. Um, they are the pins that I made back at home. They were excellent for holding everything in place. There's one at each end. And so, I'm now ready to glue the lenses in. I'm also about to get ready to fly to Singapore and Tokyo, so I guess we'll pick this up in a day or so in Tokyo. So I've been to Tokyo and then we carried on to Taiwan and now I'm in San Francisco. I glued this first lens in in Tokyo, but I was a bit of a dribbling idiot really, having jet lag and various other things and I managed to glue it in and then remember I hadn't even got the camera out. I did learn a couple of things whilst I was gluing though, which were sort of useful, and I'll show you. That was my original shape of spatula made from a hotel keycard. And whilst it worked quite well for dabbing the epoxy in, it was a bit messy. You tend to get quite a string off of the epoxy as well. Anyway, with my nail clippers, I modified the ends of more of them to this shape. And last night when I got here, whilst there was still some daylight, I actually glued in this lens on the other side very carefully with my new shaped spatula it was a lot better so what I'm going to do now is mix some epoxy up and we'll glue the last piece in here I'm trying to keep everything meticulously clean as well so I'm actually going to go wash my hands again um, and clean the lenses once more with a flannel with a dry flannel before I actually glue because I don't want anything stuck on them so I'll mix some glue and then we'll stick the lens in the glue is mixed it's of the five minute variety so the clock is ticking so using one of my modified spatulas and just a little bit of glue I want to just get a little bead down the front of the lens here 
very carefully. Very small amount of glue spread out. It really is a bloody hell of a bit on there. Right. It will actually clean off, so it's not disastrous. And a little bit more. I really dislike gluing, to be honest. It's about the least enjoyable part of doing this. The stitching and cutting and everything's quite fun. But the gluing is tedious. I suppose because it's rather irreversible. I know cutting's not exactly reversible. I'll always cut another lens out anyway. There we are. That's fairly well spread. So I'm going to drop that into the frame. in. Yep, there isn't much squidging out. There's a tiny bit on the lens there. That'll, I can actually polish it off after it's done. I'm not going to make it worse by smearing it around. That would just make the job a damn sight worse. What I will do is just get some glue in the corners whilst I've still got some runny glue, just so I don't push the lens out. I'm not going to glue all of it because that would be silly. I think just enough to, to hold it in. A tiny bit more glue there in place. It's amazing. I mixed this glue just a few minutes ago. I know it says five minutes, but it really is beginning to go off. So I'm just getting some glue into the into the corner there, mainly so I can't sort of push the lens forward by mistake. Balls it up. Now there's one of those nasty stringy bits coming off. I could just hold it over that way, I suppose. That might be a little easier. And get some more glue in. Just push it in with the, the point of the spatula. But that's working quite well. Let's put a little bit more in whilst we're at it. The glue is beginning to go thick. And then I will mix some more later and sort of have a final go around. But I'm not going to film that because it really is tediously dull, quite frankly. We're not too far from the end, though. Gluing is finished, and I'm very pleased with that second lens. And I didn't smear it down the front, so uh, they both look pretty good. I hope you agree. And uh, what I'm going to do now is, is sort of get ready to do the stitching. Now, I drilled some holes when I was in India, just to get everything positioned before I um, did the sewing here. So I'm just going to use a couple of my pins again. Pin the um, frame to the leather and then what I'm going to do is drill each pair of holes so I'm going to start off here with these two holes if you can see them and uh, basically stitch round through in pairs so I think there's eight holes along the bottom half and there's actually an odd number along the top I'm just not going to use the last hole which is terribly close it's in there, I'm not going to worry. And so I'm just going to drill and stitch in pairs starting from there. That makes the most sense to me. It should be fairly painless. Well, the goggles are complete. I actually stitched well into the night. Um, and uh, this morning I went and found some more elastic. The elastic I had, I decided wasn't quite man enough. So I found a, a shop. I think lots of people must do dressing up in San Francisco because it wasn't very difficult to find a shop that sold all manner of fabrics and they sold elastic by the yard, which is excellent. So that's done. It's all sewn on. I'm not going to parade around San Francisco in my flying goggles in case someone gets a wrong idea. I used an awful lot of cotton. It's a 30 meter roll. I've used a hell of a lot of it. And uh, the only thing that upset any security people on the way around is my nail clippers, which I have all the time anyway. The Indian gentleman took quite a lot of uh, interest in them. Maybe he doesn't clip his nails properly. Anyway, the challenge is complete. We'll try the goggles in the Vauxhall in the coming days. And uh, thanks for watching. See you soon.